the Lake Tangiika Aquarium is set up, finally ready for the fish. We got the tank scaped, plants in there, lights secured, filtration up and running, stocked with all of the biological media needed to sustain the fish that will be inhabiting this aquarium. But what are the fish? watching previously, we're stacking it with Lake Tanganyika African Shell Dwellers. And we've got a massive amount of them. The problem though, is the fish that are going with them. Also from Lake Tanganyika, and if you haven't guessed it, the whole aquarium will be Lake Tanganyika, but these are Frontosa, a natural predator within that lake that do pose a threat to the shell dwellers. Now, if you've been following this channel long enough, you'll already remember that we already did a 120 gallon aquarium with Frontosa as well as the African shell dwellers. In this case, we're using the Multifasciatus. You see, we've only ever taken a look at these guys and we're mesmerized with how they act and interact when they're in an aquarium of their own. It'd be absolutely fascinating to see any type of characteristic differences between an aquarium with shell dwellers in it and then an aquarium with shell dwellers and the natural predators. And to me, that's absolutely fascinating. Do the shell dwellers do better alone? Do they act differently alone? Do they breed more often or do they just breed to the size of the aquarium, you know, kind of max out on the population based off food source and available space, number of shells? Or do they get into more of a survival mode with the frontosa in the aquarium thinking, we have to breed for our survival regardless of what's in here? Do they stay closer to their shells or are they more defensive? Uh, do they attack the front toes? What's actually going to happen? Having two separate aquariums set up, in my opinion, to be able to compare these things, absolutely fascinating. So when it comes to the scape, idealistically, the frontosa are most likely going to spend most of their time on this end. They have the ability to go through out and behind the entire rock work. There's tons of caves and crevices and whatnot. Although I do feel as they get older, they'll just spend most of their time on top of it. So where would be the ideal place to put the shell dwellers? Well, we don't really want them in and amongst the frontosa. We don't want to give the frontosa an easy meal. We should be putting them down here. And this is why we're going to put the most of the shells down on this end, allowing them to have free clearance of the rocks, which the Frontosa should find to be a secure home where they'll spend most of their time. Whereas the shell dwellers will have all of this area to populate and make their own. Will it work? I think it will simply because we've done it before. I'm just incredibly excited to see the differences between the two aquariums. The hard part will be taking half of everything in this aquarium, half the shells and half the fish. It should be relatively easy because once I put my hand in there, the shell dwellers are going to do what shell dwellers are known for. And that is of course, dart into their shells and hide, which makes removing them incredibly simple. We remove the shell, which is filled with water and we remove the fish, add it to their new aquarium. Everything will be okay. So one of the best ways to move these guys, I'm gonna move the light back so it's gonna look a little different here. But one of the best ways is with a simple um, jug of some sort or whatever you want to do, put a little water in it and just grab the shells. There will be fish within them. And if you watch closely, you're going to start seeing them dart into their shells and whatnot. So everything I'm grabbing, there are fish in these. And what I got to try to focus on is try to get some of the shells with some males and females in there. If not, I'll have to use uh, the net to kind of get some. I got a whole container filled. Even though these guys have been submerged underwater, they, uh, removing them uh, added air pockets to them. So if I let go here, watch, a lot of them are gonna float. And that's normal, so don't worry too much about it. Um, what I do suggest you do though, is just pour them in naturally. These guys are going to move these shells and do what they want anyway. Floaters. Cook 
kind of want to just rotate them around, get them to sink, and that should do it. This aquarium already is uh, substantially more fascinating than it once was. So we're just gonna spread them out like this, just a little bit, nothing too crazy. Make them kind of encircle the end here because this was the initial plan. And that should do it. We should have caught enough of them. So with these guys kind of settling in and found their shells, you can see them, it does look like we've got a couple of males and a bunch of females, so hopefully that will work out. But again, if we have to move more females to this tank, we simply will. Right here up front, that's a male and a female. And then a male over there, so we'll see how that goes. Hopefully he's got a girlfriend in there somewhere as well. Or, or oh, there is one, just popping it out. Oh, and there's another one. So one, two, three females, two males, and Lord knows what that is in the shell that he's kind of looking over and guarding. Um, but this is doing well so far. Um, this is exactly what I needed to happen. These guys needed to know where their shells look. They could have went anywhere. They're shell dwellers. Uh, so in the next few days, all of this substrate is going to be moved around and uh, shells will be buried and they'll create their own little homes. It'll just be fascinating for me to see over the next few days. If you're not a member of this channel, consider subscribing to that. Uh, you get to see everything first. Anyways, time to move the frontosa. <laughs> Do as I said, guys. Hang out. <laughs> Hang out at Pride Rock. So that was. There's 13 total. We've just added two. There's three in the net here, I believe I counted. One, two, no, just two. My counts are so off. So that makes four. Oh, look, the frontosa went to the end of the tank. Do you see them over there? Interesting. This will make six. Get your mouth off the net. This will be eight. It's always ideal to let the fish swim out instead of dumping them. Three more makes 11. 12. And the biggest and baddest of them all, the one we call Joey. <laughs> Get in there. So they're minutes in. And uh, what I hope to be planned is happening. Shell dwellers over there. Of course, the frontosa will venture over there, you know, seeing what's going on. But right now, Look at them all massing up behind there. Um, for the most part, they're occupying the rocks and the caves and uh, swimming over. Oh, oh, oh. Wait a minute. So my frontosa have been with other fish before. They've been with shell dwellers. But those black widows, the ones that don't have the vertical stripes, they've never been. Man, the black background with these guys is just absolutely gorgeous. Look at the blue on Joey. Damn, bro. Yeah, look at this. Oh my lord, they're all pack hunting. <laughs> they're like dolphins or something. The shell dwellers are gonna be fun. What are you doing over here? Go home now. You, home. You too! These guys think they're so cool. Get home. Okay, let's give these guys 24 hours to settle in and we'll see what happens. Right now, I can already say this tank is absolutely phenomenal. Click the like button if you agree. 24 hours later, everybody is settled in. The Frontosa followed me around the aquarium, which is a good sign. They're looking for food. Shell dwellers still inhabiting their shells. Everybody's still there. This aquarium is just absolutely gorgeous. I am just fascinated with it. Joey, on the other hand, hides behind the rocks. Pride Rock. What a beauty of an aquarium. And ladies and gentlemen, that was my take on a Lake Tanganyika Community Aquarium. Frontosa, 
one of the alpha predators of Lake Tanganyika, as well as shell dwellers, the bottom of the totem pole, so to speak. It's gonna be fascinating to see what happens next in comparison to an aquarium with just the shell dwellers in it. And if you're excited to see that as well, if you're an Aquarius just like me, that just becomes encapsulated by things like this, make sure you subscribe if you're not already. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm gonna enjoy this tank. I love my seat. Turn around, <laughs> we got South America. We look forward and we have Lake Tanganyika. Love it.